Good afternoon on what is a grey overcast but actually mild day. It is Tuesday the 14th of December. I am back in the Reed Knock with a nice hot cup of tea and a cat who is not ours on my lap who is staring at me, adoring me, going why aren't you paying attention to me? And some boxes to continue unboxing. I'm basically I've been digging into these um, basically with this round of um, titles so let's find out what's next and um, next I am going to look at um, this uh, which my friend Keith has kindly sent across uh, for uh, our friend Bud of Bud's RPG Reviews uh, so let's take a look and see what is in here um, oh, he's on the move, so they will be fighting with him for um, your attention. So uh, let's just obviously very well wrapped. I'm literally unwrapping this basically just to go. What's this? This looks interesting. Um, I don't want to tear too much into this. Um. Oh, excuse the delay. Here we go. Yeah. And um, actually, interesting thing is, I'm possibly guessing that's a target bag. Uh, Target is not a is not a, is, is not a brand we or we have here in the UK. Anyway, finally, two minutes afterwards, where after um, he settled back down, and I fought with the packaging. Thank you, Keith. I will um, uh, essentially open up, and what we've got here is Act on Cthulhu Campaigns: Assault on the Mounts of Madness by Jason Durrell. Now, Jason Durrell, you may <coughs> excuse me uh, know now as essentially he's designed the. Um, I'm trying to think, he basically did a little design work on the Conan um, role playing game and more recently uh, RuneQuest, including the excellent RuneQuest starter set. Um, but this is Assault on the Mounts of Madness for Acton Cthulhu. Uh, now, this is not compatible with the recent 2D20 system version of Call of Cthulhu, sorry, of, of uh, Acton Cthulhu, but with actual Call of Cthulhu itself and also Savage World. Now back in the day, um, Acton Cthulhu essentially is uh, its one of the two role-playing games uh, set during World War II in which involved the, not, involve, uh, the Nazis with the Mythos. And the other one is um, basically, uh, uh, is, is, um, I'm trying to think what the name was, it's it, um, it, it the one from Cubicle 7. Um, and this one is a bit more pulp. This is pulpy in tone. Um, you know, basically, you get in there, um, face the Nazis and the, the creatures um, uh, they're dealing with. Uh, they're horrible, and you can definitely punch, punch a Nazi. Um, and it was also available in other game systems. There's a version in Fate as well. But uh, they say this is one of two campaigns that were that were published for it. Um, and Assault Amounts of Badness, in some ways, you might think of this as the uh, pulpy World War II uh, sequel to Beyond the Mounts of Madness, which is the um, uh, essentially the classic Call of Cthulhu 7, which came out at the beginning of the millennium. Uh, and that itself is a um, essentially a, 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 a sequel to At the Mounts of Madness, the novella by H.P. Lovecraft. So, let's have a look at The Salt of the Mounts of Madness. Um, an ancient evil rises at the end of the world. A terrifying World War II campaign, fully compatible with Call of Cthulhu 6th edition, not 7th, and Savage Worlds role-playing game. Discover the secret history of the final days of World War II, when the Allies joined forces with the Soviets to battle the Third Reich in the most dangerous uh, theatre of war yet, the snowy plains, icy mountains and subterranean tunnels of Antarctica. 
together these brave soldiers must um, battle Nazis, occult conspiracies, monstrous foes and, and ancient horrors, as well as the very land itself. A stake, at stake is their own survival and the fate of the world. Um, and that's done as a little basically um, uh, 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 um, note from Alexander Telton um, from Section M. Section M being the secret, secret agency here in the UK dealing with the mythos. Uh, a certain amount of madness brings the secret war to an earth-shattering conclusion, including a seven-part adventure taking the investigators from the mid-Atlantic to the centre of the Antarctica, a multinational military force bordered by experimental aircraft carrier, uh, a branching plot structure allowing investigators to participate in all phases and fronts of the assault, uh, the rise of a long-vanished civilization, and the unearthing of their greatest mystery, new skills and rules for exploration and cold weather survival, new monsters, new horrors, and hideous twists, a vast campaign sending the investigators to the most remote place on Earth, facing enemies from this world and from Aeon's past. So we have, uh, we open up and we've got a, um, a map of uh, the South Pole uh, and its environs. Uh, but, uh, and then we get into um, Jason's forward. And there's a lot to go through because it's a full campaign. Uh, and this takes us into essentially Terra Incognita. Um, there we go. Um, and that's interesting that essentially that's the name of an actual role playing game itself came out oh, God, in the noughties, uh, based on Fudge, I believe, uh, which was basically about. Um, exploration and adventure uh, and with a base at the south but basically the Antarctic uh, where all the all the lost explorers would go basically after their disastrous expeditions and you would go out and help them and, um, and so on anyway so uh, we get into um, essentially joining the assault and a guide to use in the occupation so we have a mixture of civilian intelligence military and elite occupation military elite occupations which have a role in, in in the campaign and this will be basically for both systems for call of cthulhu 7, 8 6th edition um and um at, uh, um uh, basically and savage worlds and then we've got the background information and this does cover two things the Parbody expedition uh, and also the start start with a more expedition of, so that's 1930 31 and then 1933 the start with the Moor expedition is the one made famous in um, Lovecraftian circles by the uh, novella At the Mountains of Madness. Uh, and also the um, New Schwab Laban expedition in 1939, uh, which comes on later. Um, and then the Nazi, Nazi push into the Antarctica covers 1939 to present, i.e. present in this sort of 1944 45. Um, we've got a complete history. And as well as reference materials, um, so well, it's actually quite short, actually, as far as reference materials go. Um, but let's just have a look. Um, so uh, it does reference beyond the Mountains of Madness, of course. Um, also, um, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym um, of Nantucket by Edgar Allan Poe, at, uh, uh, and there are a couple of other sources as well. Um, and also references uh, Graham Wormsley's Stealing Cthulhu, uh, a probably one of the more useful uh, supplements for Lovecraftian role-playing, um, which isn't specific to any particular rule set. If you can find a copy, um, do grab it, because it's really great. And then we get thrown into the action, where um, we have Siege on Saxonburg, um, at, uh, and this sets everything up, and it's essentially taking place um, in the South South Atlantic, uh, and um, and uh, with sort of like the forces sort of operating out of uh, the island chain of Tristan da Cunha, um, really quite remote, but, uh, and um, basically the player characters have to make an assault upon Saxonburg Island. Uh, presumably the Nazis have a base, and that's where they make the first discoveries um, about 
what's truly going on uh, and you've got some of the secrets being uh, hinted at there um, some kind of storage facts um, or development um, facts and then we have a very quick event outcome of course um, facing the beasts themselves big gunfight all ending essentially as the, the, uh, the allies sail away in a big explosion so classic setup and um, uh, then we have um, uh, onto the floating base um, um, and um, brilliant first thing I absolutely love this um, a thumbs up to um, uh, Jason for this because he has a ship um, he has the good ship Berg oh, sorry the good Berg ship uh, Jeremiah um, because it's actually a uh, I'll show you uh, you've got basically um, a landing strip or aircraft carrier and it's made of pycrete. Pycrete is a mixture of uh, I believe wood shavings and ice frozen. Um, at uh, um, the brainchild of boffin Geoffrey Pike, and it's a real thing. They never built anything out of it, but it was an idea. And essentially, because uh, this is on alternate sort of like past or you know, sort of high timeline, um, why not? Uh, and it's perfectly pulpy and suitable. Um, so essentially, that's it. Basically, we have a floating base in the South Atlantic. But, uh, um, and then throughout your other thing is your note is we have a couple of um, notes assigned so we've got notes for uh, Call of Cthulhu there and then for Savage World so that, that's throughout so essentially to say the book is written for both of the um, uh, systems so yeah um, so I mean really good artwork and Essentially, what interesting things like there's a, um, a table of onboard hazards, so essentially things that can happen whilst you're aboard the base because it's not all safe, you know. Um, whether because um, things can break down, uh, people can go, you know, basically have a people can um, essentially have a nervous breakdown because of the stress and so on. Um, and then the bit, essentially, at this point, we get to the point where, however, with the learned knowledge, the um, the player characters begin to look at essentially aiming for Antarctica um, and discovering what's on there and quite what the um, Nazis have been up to uh, and we have things like um, this piece of artwork there and nicely what that does is it actually you have a um, presumably a seek there and one of the signature um, player characters in the pre player characters in this in, in uh, Act on Cthulhu is a Sikh. So nice to include those. Um, as you've throughout, we've got a, a mixture of um, the you know sort of like slightly cartoonish poppy artwork, um, and then we've got discussion of the blue uh, blue crystal serum. The interesting thing is essentially um, the blue crystals, I believe, are, are sort of like um, Atlantean in origins, and there's a whole thing about one. Uh, one of the fat Nazi factions, because there are two in Acton Cthulhu, using it to enhance their technology, um, uh, whereas the other one, Black Sun, is, is working on summoning and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then we have Terra from the Deep, and absolutely again, uh, a, a just super piece of um, action is uh, having the Berg ship attacked, and it's attacked by something big literally rolling up onto, onto, onto the bow and just taking crunching out of it and as it's the aircraft around it attempt to take it down its tentacles are flailing and um, it's, uh, it's, it's the mythos equivalent of that end scene in King Kong um, but tentacular um, so I never did review this but I always wanted to so I've really got to go and dig this out um, at, uh, Find out. Finally, we can actually get to. So this is actually quite way into the campaign. We get onto um, Antarctica here, where you see the great walls of the con ice walls of the continent, the cliffs, um, but, uh, and then um, it's actually got a breakdown of what um, 
of, of running the assault there. It gets a bit complex, I think. Um, so the, 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 the keeper is really going to have to look at that and carefully sort of like marshal uh, where the player character is going, which scene they're going to go and do, um, and which 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 I'll find out. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. Um, so lots of things going on. Oh, and um, just fantastic pieces. Of, you know, we have um, just fantastic images, which you wouldn't normally think, but essentially. Uh, you have um, great riding beasts uh, of, of uh, un unfathomable nature uh, with Nazis atop them. Almost um, like, um, essentially, um, but, uh, the um, <sighs> Banthers um, in Star Wars. You just think sort of like um, Stormtroopers riding Banthers on Tatooine, but here uh, those the 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 the, the, the um, the Banthers are sort of like um, covered in, in white fur uh, um, and have sort of like vaguely um, bear-like faces, very vaguely, and mostly tentacles. But, uh, yeah, so it's quite text-heavy. I mean, I mean, it's understandable because it's a big campaign, um, and I think it's one of those campaigns which is kind of forgotten. Um, it's not thought of in the classic mode of um, essentially call basic Call of Cthulhu when you really think about Walking the Wastes or uh, Shadows of Yogg-Sothoth or um, you know Master of Nilothotep um, but it's another one of those where you, you sort of go okay the, you've got all those classic campaigns but there are other campaigns as well put out by other publishers and this is this is um, another example of, of, of that um, and they tend to get kind of a bit lost um, when, in, in, so to be fair, get a bit lost in the reverence that people have for those classic campaigns. But I think, obviously, in many cases, these have are just as playable, um, just as fun, um, and this one's obviously a bit more over the top because it's pulp. Um, it's pulp action. Um, yeah. So lots of things in here. Basically, this, is, this will keep going for ages. There are, I mean, um, here we have again another nice piece of a bit of action um, with um, German half tracks racing towards um, a facility. Um, okay. To... Now, if you can find a copy of this, you really should. Because um, uh, if you're interested in Call of Cthulhu and enjoy sort of like kind of pulp style play, um, I think this will be really, really good. Oh, and he's off again. Uh, and uh, what we've got here. Um, bit of a um, essentially an autopsy on some kind of creature and given that this isn't in the Antarctic this echoes the scenes in um, uh, the scenes where um, the um, the protagonist of the stories uh, at, in the at Mountains of Madness and also later on in Beyond the Mountains of Madness essentially perform autopsies on, on the elder um, on the elder things So yeah, so multiple strands of storytelling, um, lot, multiple scene action scenes like facing tanks, um, tanks in ice caves, um, utterly bonkers if you think about it, you know, a ridiculous sort of thing, but you know, why not, why not, um, I just hope the player characters are, are um, uh, best place to deal with this. Um, uh, and of course, because you've got ice caves, you have snowmobiles, and you can have. Um, I, I would recommend, you know, basically definitely, definitely having a chase or a, just some kind of chase scene in ice caves, ice tunnels, in snowmobiles. Um, but, um, and the other thing about this is obviously is that you can 
sort of mix and match the characters. You, you can have characters all from all sides. You know, not um, you know the war at, uh, involved in fighting the Nazi threat. So yeah, if you want, to, it does say basically if you want to combine, you know, Soviet Soviet uh, characters with um, British characters and American characters, French characters, and so on, you can all do that. I think that's, that, that's great. Um, and of course, the other thing, obviously, you've got an Indian character. Um, in the mix with that and also in the quick start there was an Australian character so lots of options there uh, characters you can create um, um, I mean we've only played a little bit of um, Act on Cthulhu back in the start um, with the sort of like we began playing with a couple of, a couple of scenarios um, but, uh, and we really did kind of sort of play up a bit to the stereotypes um, uh, which was kind of fun um, at, uh, one character sort of completely complete RAF um, uh, buffer complete with you know war sort of like uh, war moustache sort of thing um, not quite war moustache but you know um, moustache uh, and so on and I went with the um, sort of like uh, the secret uh, the um, uh, secret agent um, actually played by a young Herbert Lom which was all very effective we enjoyed that, enjoyed that immensely um, and then we have things like this scene of uh, um, DC uh, uh, C-47, Douglas DC-3 flying into danger, classic World War II aeroplane sort of thing where hopefully there are some characters aboard waiting to jump out uh, or via para a parachute down into action, because that's what you always want. Um, so, so much in here. Uh, this is probably months and months worth of play um, it, it, you know it's a mammoth piece of work this is over 300 pages long um, and um, there is so much uh, in here and um, that you could develop you could you, you could take and run really for sort of like um, as the final part of your Act on Cthulhu campaign. Now, whether or not um, uh, um, Modifius Entertainment will come back this campaign and redo it for um, uh, the 2D20 system, for the latest, the, for basically the second iteration of Act, uh, Act on Cthulhu is another matter. Um, but in the meantime, um, if you are looking out um for um, um a campaign uh, interesting campaign then you may want to try and track this one down it is difficult to find which is why it's come across from the states um and um here we've got some new occupations like um the um, majestic majestic pathfinders uh really great um at um uh, basically dropping into locations and guiding people into um, the, into danger and I've got creatures of um, and the, uh, the, uh, Antarctica like uh, the killer whale or the leopard seal and so on dangerous enough um, including penguins before we get onto the creatures of the mythos um, many of which you know actually detail in, in, in Act on Cthulhu so whether that's the Migo or the, the Shuggoths or the older things um, at, uh, um, but there are others here which I won't show you because you know you've seen enough already. So um, yeah, that is Acton Cthulhu: Assault on the uh, Mounts of Madness, final campaign for um, for, the, for the line, um, and which basically would bring us, I would imagine, sort of essentially um, any campaign you've been running of this to a really rousing sort of pulpy conclusion. Um, and completely different tones, where, for example, if you were running at the map beyond the Mount Spadus. But anyway, um, so I want to thank uh, Keith for sending this across for me to send to Bud. Fantastic, because it means that I could actually get to look at this, and then um, essentially Bud picking it up because it wasn't available in the warehouse on Midifius here, it was in the States. Uh, and um, yeah. Um, yeah, appreciate, appreciate it basically coming into my hands so I can do an unboxing of it. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching another unboxing of the Nook in the Nook. If you've enjoyed this, please do click the like button down below. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, please do post those and I will 
tips on to read them. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more more unboxings where you will see me um, uh, out here um, with a box and a book or game which I will unbox and chat about for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea and occasionally a cat who is not ours, but he's not here now right now, then please do hit that subscribe button. Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll be back again soon with another unboxing in the look. Bye for now.